Hello, beautiful people. It's good to be here. I love a show that's on time, actually a little bit early. This is wonderful. So in the past, folks have said, did you guys create Bitcoin? And we didn't. But I think if folks were actually to come out and tell you about it before or when it was coming out, it would sound something similar to what you're going to hear today. So thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. Um, this is going to go pretty fast. So we'll, uh, we'll have questions at the end. Let's see if you can keep up. We believe that there are literally secret combinations around the world. And some of them operate in different ecosystems such as media, tech, health, and they go into ecosystems in the governmental world, right? And there's other, there's other parts and pieces. They break into two different areas, private ecosystems and public ecosystems. We try to measure things in the public ecosystems like how many dollars are there in a certain country, depending on what country it is, whether it's pounds, marks, you know, yens, renminbi, you name it. They all have their different ecosystems in the financial world. And then you've got control of them with these different ecosystems in the closed or private world. So let's just assume that for a second that this is actually real. What are we going to do about it? And we believe that decentralization is a true and correct principle that actually can facilitate us to be able to neutralize the centralized effects of these secret combinations. You combine decentralization with open source technologies and you literally get a world where technology can actually lead in this disruption, in these changes. It's a simple model where you combine what we call access devices. All of you have one. Actually, there's one guy that doesn't have one here with him. And, but um, we, all, we all use these devices. In some ways, these are tracking devices that we actually pay for. So we literally, we pay to have our worlds profiled for convenience. And in some cases, like with Apple, you don't even own the hardware, let alone the data. So, but if you take a device, this particular device is a very different device. It's a decentralized phone where the operating system and the identifications are all yours as an individual. Go figure, it's actually built for the individual that ties to decentralized storage. So on the right, imagine, what we all talk about as miners with energy, if it were actual nodes or farming devices for storage, that's the equivalence of what we're discussing. So on one hand, you have access devices like a phone, and on the other hand, you have nodes that provide transactions as well as storage for humanity, okay? Um, most of you are familiar with Android, right? Some are familiar with Red Hat, which was bought by IBM for $32 billion in cash, which is the largest software transaction in the world. And some of you are familiar with Stellar. We basically forked all of those projects over the last 17 years, intelligently integrate them, and give them away to the world, the digital world, all of us. Imagine an ecosystem where you actually have no president, no king, but we all, individuals, can actually participate in a part of this ecosystem because we're here on Earth. The jurisdiction is this planet. It's not just some fictitious imaginary line where the water's not. It's this whole Earth. Imagine an ecosystem where service providers like these companies literally start an element where other service providers can also go in. For instance, these companies as well as the prior. So there's about 18 companies so far that are service providers to this digital world, and it all revolves around something that's unique. Instead of getting a device, whether it's a phone from Apple or Google, you can literally download an application on Google devices, or you can grab a whole new device, and you can actually get encryption keys. And then there's derived keys that come from those encryption keys that actually manage your digital life. Instead of calling it proof of work, it's proof of life. It's who you are, it's where you go, it's what you do. It's how fast you drive, it's what you listen to. You're proving that you're alive. No one else can do this. No one else can copy your physical DNA. No one. The way that these words actually verify, so for instance, Let's say that I lose a device. I get a new device, I plug in the words, and I verify with my fingerprint. All of my data, all of my apps, all of my messages, all of my photos, it all comes right back. 
Instead of working with Google Cloud or iCloud, you work with your own cloud, so to speak. So imagine a digital life where your identity, your logins are all basically yours. You don't log in with username and passwords anymore. Even though you interact with the same existing system, you log in with your fingerprint and a buzz to your phone. Simple, right? But imagine if you can do that, what else could you do that the current systems can't do? So imagine the individual can actually log into this new digital world. And in this digital world, they can actually create ecosystems like organizations communities, trusts, businesses. This is where decentral autonomous organizations will actually come from. How do you register them? Who are the members of them? And then once you do that, how can you actually create assets? This is one of the biggest compelling events. We're all watching this crypto ecosystem. We're on another one of those downward spirals, right? Why is it so volatile? Because it never shuts down and it's true fair market value. Stock exchanges, whether you're talking about the Freightford Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange, are all manipulated. They are legalized gambling systems. They shut down when, when business closes, they go away over the weekends, and if they drop so much in a day, the brakes get put on them, and if they continue to drop, they shut it off. That is not a fair market value. Imagine a fair market value where you can actually create digital assets, three different classes of digital assets. First, a reward system. How many of you actually use Marriott Rewards Points when you're staying in this hotel tonight? Raise your hand. That's a good point. Did you pay taxes on those? You don't. Why? Because it's an asset class that is not in US dollars. Imagine in the digital world where you actually convert to the fiat world. When you convert to the fiat world, like US dollars or whatever currency it's tied to, a reward system ties to a certain currency just like a tethered or a stable coin would. So imagine if an organization in this digital world that's created by an individual that logged in with a QR code, not a username and password, but their own identity, can actually create a rewards program. Let's say it's an employer and they actually pay contractors a dollar amount. And that dollar amount can then can be converted. We're talking about real-time payroll. Payments in real time every single day, maybe even on a transaction. So you combine rewards with tokens. Tokens are basically like stock options. A board can set the value. A board can manipulate or increase that value. A board can say that you actually have additional authorized or issuances of them, but it's an internal asset. So imagine a reward system that is an internal and external asset, a token system that is an internal asset, and then a coin system like a security you want to call it a security? Call it a security. Because that's really what they are. They're just like these public assets where you literally have a fair market value from a willing buyer to a willing seller. In certain jurisdictions, there are governance. Hopefully, they get figured out sooner or later. But imagine the three of these types of assets, something that is tied to a currency, something that is actually set based upon predetermined rights of an internal asset and then something that is actually fair market value. You can do one or, or multiple, but it creates a stability within an ecosystem like this because you're truly calling it what it is. So imagine services. Imagine an ecosystem where you can literally deliver services. Like we've got a county commissioner here in Utah, 25,000 marriages she's done in blockchain. You can vote for the president of the United States and others in blockchain. Imagine services in the digital world where you can actually validate your identity in blockchain. There's folks from credit unions here that are saying, how can we actually add value and stay competitive and stay relevant? This is how. You literally use identity that the individual proves who they are. You want to give them a mortgage? You want to give them a car loan? You can validate with third-party validators their education, their employment, their cash flow. I hope this is making sense to you because this is where the rubber meets the road, but it's all of us actually get to engage in it. I'm not up here selling a business or a product. Yes, I help to build phones. Yes, we help build decentralization, but it's all an open source technology so the whole world can actually do it. When you look at it, the difference is, is you log in, instead of logging in with Google or with Apple or with Facebook, you can literally log in with a new type of credential and it dings your phone, you put your finger on there and authenticate you in. Once you do that, imagine what you can do with your own data. So today, we basically give away our privacy for convenience to the big companies out there that sell us, Facebook and Google. But imagine an ecosystem where you could actually log in and profile your own data and then use literal 
lining up with marketers that actually want to, want to really know who you are. They don't want to just know that you search Ford or sedan. They want to know that you actually have X types of cars in your garage, X types of banks, that maybe a credit score, maybe you live in a certain zip code. They want to profile you much better. Imagine products that are built for this new ecosystem. So storage and phones that are built to work together. Imagine simple steps and phases from phone to storage to community to be able to unite us all. All with the purpose of being able to segregate from the centralized systems and really what we're talking about with those early secret combinations, big tech. These are three phones that have already been released. There are three more phones that are coming out. There's different versions or models of the phones, from the Freedom Phone to the Clear Phone to the Armor Phone or the current models that are out there. But imagine multiple different companies getting into an ecosystem, but they're leveraging Clear ID to be able to authenticate, an identification system where the individual owns their own data. Imagine storage where we all become a part of a network, where in our homes, in our offices, we actually reside with the data. If I were to take a photo, it would break it into a thousand pieces and store it in thousands of locations, not one photo in one, in one location. So imagine if 333 of those thousands of locations were to go offline, I could actually still get that photo back. That's why the internet was created, that same type of architecture. Imagine if this was actually already pre-installed on all Hewlett Packard servers in the world today for both ninth generation and 10th generation servers. We're talking eight years worth of servers, already gone through all the customs processes in all the jurisdictions. It's already pre-installed and certified. Not Microsoft, not Red Hat, not IBM. ClearOS server's already on them. ClearOS server actually has a marketplace, so it's super simple to use. So you could actually have it be a validator. You could have it be an intrusion detection device. You could have it be a content filtering device. You could also have it be a storage device from just clicking a couple little apps. ClearOS looks like this on the server side. So there's a community version, a business version, a home version. There's 40 plus thousand homes that are already using it. There's no salespeople behind this. People figure out how to pull this down and run it on their own. This was before the storage and the node infrastructure and the applications were developed and designed. 17 years in development, literally 2005, literally. It's when we bumped into it. It started a couple of years earlier than that. Um, 150 countries, almost 4,000 cities, and you've 80, 89 different languages around the world. So it's already deployed. Simple six steps. You got membership protection, communication, application, finance, and eventually health. There's a couple health organizations here. Think about this as a framework that we can all plug into. So whether you're talking about, you know, uh, becoming a member of a digital world where we all have rights. We're not just born here into a jurisdiction that we're stuck into. We're born on earth. We're a part of the human family. And through basically uniting together under a common purpose, a common cause, and letting systems lay where they will, we won't be divided. Today, we are massively divided, not just in counties, or in states, or in provinces, or in countries. We're divided as a human family. We're divided by design. We're divided by these secret combinations. There's about 1,100 of them with over a billion dollars each. And they really do operate in different circles. If we understand this, if we really come to a point where we realize that all of these things that are happening aren't just happening by happenstance. This week right now in Davos, there's certain conversations that are happening. I can't just sit here and say, by theory, I've been there. I've went to these events. I'm telling you, this is very, very real. And there has to be a decentralized alternative. There must be. If we do not unite and come together, future generations. I personally am a father of six beautiful kids. And when we all came into this world, there was no internet. There was no phones. The digital leashes that we all pay for didn't exist. If we just take a pause and just realize what's really happening, we have to lay a better foundation for the future, the future generations. And I'm not just talking our kids or our grandkids. Think about five generations looking back. If we organize ourselves and we actually have our own data, imagine what could happen in the health world. We could have true data around what's really happening. 
You have this symptom, you do these things, oh, there's an outcome, this actually works. It's about the data. We need massive amounts of data, but we've got to intelligently organize it, and this is the way to do it, at least one way. If somebody comes up with a better one, great. We're not doing this for a big dollar sign. This is for humanity. When you look at it, there's technologies that are built into certain phones. You can actually take data from the phones for health. Not just health, but literally imagine the Gmails of the world, the mail, the calendar, the context, the financial systems, all of it being replaced. Spreadsheets, presentations, documents, Zoom. Imagine the ability to compete with these companies with open source decentralized technology. Each company, Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, IBM, GoDaddy. Imagine an ability when you have the ability to say, eight countries in the last two years have adopted Bitcoin as their standard currency. All of them have realized that 10 minute transfers don't work, so they layer on a lightning network, which basically just centralizes a decentralized system. They layer on a name with a date of birth with some other identifier, whether it's a phone number or address. So now you have an individual that is connected to a public address that is centralizing decentralization. Bitcoin in and of itself, 10 minute transfer. This is a chart that basically looks at 24 hours sending 14 billion in US dollars or equivalents within that 24 hours. Bitcoin would take about $2,300 and about 10 minutes on average per transaction. Ethereum, 26, 26 million. Depending on how gas costs, this is about two years old worth of data. Um, but it, takes, it actually goes from 10 minutes down to three minutes per transaction. Then you've got Visa, jumps way up, literally $336 million. So think about that. Today's infrastructure, $336 million, to, tr to transfer 14 billion in value compared to $2,300 with a Bitcoin ecosystem. Now the argument is power. The argument really should be, why do we need to use that power? Again, the folks that created Bitcoin really provided a wonderful litmus test for the human race. Cryptography works. It hasn't been compromised yet, I'm not saying that it won't be in the future. But as of today, Bitcoin worked. The Lippmann test worked. The problem is it's not fast enough to run the economy on it. Take, take what this digital world offers in an asset called native that no one owns today. For those of you who didn't know, Bitcoin, 20% of Bitcoin was actually taken off the, right out of the start. So literally 20% of Bitcoin right out of the beginning was locked up. In this ecosystem, zero is locked up. It is all of humanities. Imagine one asset, not that rules them all, that serves them all. I hope you're understanding what you're seeing. It is basically real-time transactions. If you want to see it, stop by after. I'll show it to you in real time. We're talking full settlement within five seconds. You can create your own currency. This isn't just, it's like with what Ethereum did to Bitcoin. Everyone can create their own token, but it's much more than that. Imagine the ability where everyone can actually create their own, like an employer or a company that wants to contract something out. They can actually create their own assets dynamically, digitally. They can convert it in real time. So I hope you understand that. When we're talking about the world today, all of you either have an Android phone or an Apple phone in your pocket. What we're talking about is a new incumbent of multiple devices, not just clear devices. There will be lots of service providers that will come into this ecosystem. Why can I stand before you and tell you that? For 10 years prior, for the last 12 years, we've been building decentralized systems. For 10 years prior to that, we helped build centralized systems. We were ranked number one in the world at it starting in 2000. We created a whole industry called the managed service provider industry. It's a $256 billion industry. It's nothing compared to what decentralization can do. Decentralization is a true and correct principle. I don't care what your beliefs are, religiously or not, we are here floating on a rock in a universe. This universe is decentralized. The people that came over on the Mayflower, like this hotel we're staying in, they decentralized. All the way to the county level is where the authority rests. 
If you really understand land management, asset management, property management, identity management, it goes to the counties. The United States of America was decentralized from our forefathers from day one. They consolidated that into states, and they're trying to do it into the federal. I hope that all of you can at least stand up and do your job if you're in government. See it. Study the Constitution. Study the Declaration. There's a reason why the words are spelled out what they are. There's a Declaration of Unity. You can see the document here. This is actually the second location that it's been at. You can read it. There's a pen. You can sign it if you agree with it. This Declaration of Unity literally can unite us all. The Declaration of Independence was signed by 53 people. There's a little bit more than 53 people that have signed that. What you're seeing may be new and unique. It may not be. But we all need to work together. Again, united we can do it. Divided we will fall. These are the things that you can do. Whether it's purchasing your phone or if you want to, just go ahead and wait. There'll be a, a simple app that you can pull down on an Android-based phone. Apple, we're not going to. We will literally, Apple keeps their own encryption keys. There's no way to include it. The individual must own their own data, and to own their own data, you have to work off an open platform. So grab a phone or grab Clear Life when it comes out, become a node on the network. You can literally take any x86 or ARM-based system, that's a computer, and you can put it on your network. You can download a free operating system called ClearOS Server, and you can run it on your own. You don't even have to pay a dime to do it. You have to pay for what we already have, an HVAC-based building, an internet connection, and some power. That's all you need. It's the same type of stuff. And when we say power, we're not talking the type of power that Bitcoin takes. We're talking about 60 watts. You can actually become a member of the digital nation, or the digital world, literally. A member, a resident, or a citizen. Memberships are the first ones. You can actually create a business, a trust, an association, a community. Some people talk about decentralized autonomous organizations. It's effectively the same thing. You can have multiple multiple people inside of it that actually sign to pass certain things. It can even be blind. You don't even need to know who they are. Everyone in the world could actually join one. Imagine everyone in a county or in a state or in a city being able to vote, truly vote. No fraud. Most people say there's always going to be fraud. We call it the Maria Gonzalez problem. There's 24 Maria Gonzalez's born in the same hospital on the same day. How do you track them? This absolutely, this proof of life can absolutely, we're all unique. We all go unique places. We all do unique things. Our DNA is unique. I promise you there will be a collision between health and the digital world. The physical world, our bodies, and the digital world, they will all come together. And if they come together in such a way where we are not in control of our own data, future generations will not have anywhere close to the same freedoms that we have enjoyed. It's massively important. This work is imperative. Become or start a business. I mean, imagine starting a business similar to what your current business does, but in this ecosystem, you don't have the renewals every year because you're actually proving that you're continuing to exist based upon transactions. Or imagine not paying taxes in a digital world where it actually comes out and says, in this digital world, there is no tax. There is no slavery. There is no tyranny. Taxation without representation is what we're living in. That is tyranny. In the digital world, we can choose it. It's like the frontier. I would say, let's flip the, let's flip the tables. Let's say you're Cherokee, Navajo, Chickasaw, and you're actually watching this Mayflower floating on the water coming towards you. Do you have any idea of what is going to happen to your posterity? Do you have any idea what's going to happen to future generations? The death the oppression. Please think about this. This is the reality we live in today. You don't have to trust me. Just turn on the news. Personally, for the last 20 years, I've chose not to. It's just noise. But the reality is still here. We have an opportunity to make a massive difference. Why? Because of innovation. And if innovation is intelligently organized for future generations and we become a part of it, all we have to do is choose it. There's a reason why the United States dollar is the standard today. And one would argue that it's not today. In 2014, the Rumyunbi was actually what oil is purchased from both Iran, Russia, Japan, Venezuela, 
All of them are all buying it, not on the U.S. dollar now. In 1933, the United States of America lost its gold standard because they were honest. A president came in and was honest, said this doesn't add up. We, can't, we, don't have the, we don't have the gold backing these dollars. Let's go ahead and just buy oil from Saudi Arabia and get Saudi Arabia to back it. All their oil, they'll sell it on the dollar. You guys and gals all know that this is changing. And it's not that it's a bad thing. It shifts all the time. We've seen it in past histories. British dollar to the U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar to the renminbi. What I would argue, and I've spent a lot of time in China, not a ton, but I can tell you the people are good. Their hearts are good, but they are massively oppressed, and they don't have a choice at this stage. Humanity has a choice. You choose. For instance, starting a business. You choose your jurisdiction. You think you want to raise money, so you go and start a C Corp in Delaware because you think the shareholder laws are good with it? Why not, why not do something that is actually beneficial for the human race? Decentralization and understanding it and embracing it is good for the human race, period. Not only can you actually have a business in this ecosystem or be a member, but you can actually have disputes that can get resolved. You can create different types of cases, whether it's a claim, whether it's public or private, whether it's something that is a class action suit. Imagine being able to, in the digital world, link people in anonymously into a certain suit that you can prove certain things. But imagine all of these members and businesses have already agreed to digitally solve it. And then they pay for it at the same time, not some system that pays for it. They pay for it. If there's a claim between parties, there's transparency, there's honesty, and you connect in the digital world. Imagine the ability for different councils to actually have alignment. And these people are not there for a dollar or to rub shoulders. They're there to serve one another. The folks on the councils literally have to, we have to have an attitude of service, compassion, and love, which is very different than the greed and pride and ego that this society is just fraught with today. You know, my dad died up in New York, and he always said, there's a doggy dog world out there, Mike. Right? And it's, it's sad to see that, but it doesn't have to be that way. This is a system that is basically an open platform where a lot of these different mediations can happen. So everyone in the world can have a Zoom replacement, your own meeting location, 24 hours a day. But you actually own the data. You can actually transcribe the data. You can actually search your data. It's your data. Imagine a Zoom that is not owned by China, and you actually own the data. It's just as fast. It's got even more bells and wishes, if you ask me. You can go to app.clear. Dot one to be able to see it. Not only that, but how do we build this digital world? In the software development world, there is brilliance all around this globe. We personally have eight offices in different countries, eight different countries. Wonderful people, humble, hardworking. The drive and the desires, nothing like I've, I've seen in other parts of the world, particularly India, Pakistan, Australia, the Philippines, Canada, Greece, Italy, New Zealand. Developers can develop with tools like this that can do it in, in a rapid pace. That's how we're going to be able to do this, is you literally you organize the developers worldwide to not only communicate what needs to be done, but to actually get paid real time. Imagine you throw up a task. This task worth 500. This is worth 300. Whether they do it or not, once it's signed off, they get paid. Imagine an ecosystem where not only developing, but you organize all these systems together, and it's free to the world. So instead of signing up for your Gmail account or your Proton account, you sign up for a Clear Mail account or others that are subsidiaries. Again, Clear is just the start of it. Everyone else will just, all they do is they use the storage API and the ID API, and others can deliver, build businesses on it. Maybe it's a digital business, maybe it's not. Imagine a world where you have ID. And it's not just an ID for the digital ecosystem, but it turns into the, 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 the literally a physical world. How do, you, how do you traverse borders? Today, no country accepts a digital ID. One would argue, yesterday there was a conversation around somebody that actually just got out of prison, couldn't get a bank account, and somebody that literally uh, was a refugee and couldn't even get a bank account. Well, why? Because you can't identify them. 
one would argue they should actually know who they are, right? So imagine in a digital world where someone can actually be identified because they build a reputation for them individually that can actually then continue to traverse into residency and then into citizenship. And they're actually proving beyond a shadow of a doubt who they are better than some centralized system. I don't know about you, but I'm about tired of the Equifaxes and the TransUnion and the experience of the world that literally take our data, commingle it, and then let everybody else hack it. And then a government that says, oh, you can't penetrate them, you can't go after them, they're immune. The digital world is not just a native asset like this little guy here. Everyone can create their own asset. Everyone can be free. United, we can do anything. Divided, we will fall. What do you choose? And I'll stop now and ask, open up for questions. Thoughts, comments, feedback? Go. Your uh, mm -hmm. Can you come to the microphone, please? Go ahead, buddy. Go, go ahead. Uh, how you doing? My name is Adante Jones. I'm a software engineer, and uh, I mainly focus on bringing in um, uh, small businesses into blockchain. Um, my question to you is, you know, with a lot of these systems, we're getting rid of human interactions in a lot of ways with uh, allowing blockchain to govern things. And I'm, I am a blockchain enthusiast, but I ask, uh, have you considered uh, what you guys are going to do about the HR uh, aspect of the, the whole system? Yeah, it even goes a step deeper. What about cross-border HR and immigration? All of it ties together. We're one world, one people. So you basically match up a project with a developer and skill sets. So, so uh, let me add to that question. So say with this, it's, it's, it's kind of like um, we're building social credit here in a way because you're building your identity and you're tying that to the blockchain. So when you get into things like soul bound tokens and things, you can have um, things that show up on your record that stick. So um, sometimes you have issues where those things aren't supposed to be there. So I was just wondering, have you already considered how to tackle those type of issues or um, just kind of open it up for that? So there's actually an element of virtues. So when you go and read this Declaration of Unity, there's an element of virtues. We all, we all actually tie to them, whether we realize it or not. And you can actually lay, layer on machine learning or artificial intelligence inside of those virtues. And then you can tie that to an individual's reputation. And ultimately, the individual is accountable for who they are in the digital world. Just like today, you know, if you have a 12-year-old kid that makes a mistake, versus a 21-year-old individual versus a, an 80. Their records can go and get expunged, but are they really expunged? Are those mug shots on, of them online actually changed? And what you're talking about is a, a vehicle where an individual can actually go in and manage their reputation. They actually care about it. Just like a lot of you care about your credit. The American dream is not to be able to buy a house. It's to be able to get financed to buy a house. And ultimately, that's what this is all about, is how do you actually build not just a credit system, but a reputation system that the world can actually stand on, that the individual cares about, why? Because they own it. And not just when they're born and they're maturing it through life, but actually when they pass on. A lot of people haven't figured out that blockchain can actually facilitate death. It, it bounces over probate. You can literally take something that's been collected, an asset, land, management, you name it, and you can transfer it from generation to generation if done right. So a software developer, you get, you get exactly what we're talking about. Your question tells me you totally get it. So do we have time for more, or should I wrap it up with that? Thank you. Let's have that question. Does this make sense to everybody? If it does, raise your hand. If it doesn't, please don't. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Go ahead. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Um, just my question was about the phone, about the hardware. Does it run on any network, uh, cellular network? And does the carrier have any access to user data? So two parts to the answer. One, they're unlocked cell phones worldwide on the GSM network. Okay. We actually inked a deal with Deutsche Telekom. And in the United States, that's T-Mobile. But Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, they all work on it. Some of these vendors are not open, 
So if like Verizon or T-Mobile, they may mess with the voicemails or some of the texting stuff, but ultimately the bands and frequencies are worldwide unlocked, period. So think standards and think open, and that's, that's how we're gonna get through this mess, standards and open, but decentralization and all of it. So and then the second part of it is using a, a type of cellular service that obfuscates your number. So even if you have a number today, you can port it to another provider that actually obfuscates your identity linkage to that. Because right now, most of you either have a corporate plan or an individual plan, and your social security number and your name is linked to that. So that means you think Facebook knows a lot about you, or Google does, your cellular provider knows a ton more. Where you're going, what you're doing, I mean, they. They don't tr profile it the same way, but they still have that data. And I'm not saying you have to be paranoid about it, but that data is actually you. Imagine if you were able to embrace this data and productize yourself. So instead of just telling people about a phone and making money, imagine you actually use the phone and you actually get paid. We're talking about a social credit system that people actually pay you for? This is the way to do it in the future. It really is. So, so does it, and it does ob obfuscate the number. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Right. So, thanks, Michael. All right. Thank you. <laughs> you know that.